to show you a few more of the features that are available in Taya Sui Sketches School. In our first video, we focused in on all the drawing tools and what they look like. So for this one, before I open up this page, I'm gonna tap on the little setting gears and show you that you can change the background paper. So you can make it look like recycled, like watercolor, like cardboard. Um, you can put in lines and squares and dots and even school lines. So those can be very helpful as a background. You can also import a photo to use as a background and you can choose a color to use as a background. So I'm gonna just go ahead to start here. I'm gonna choose a color. We get a palette here and I can go ahead and choose any color that I want for a background here. Okay, I think I'm gonna just pick kind of a light gray and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit add and there is my color that I put in. There's another way that you can put in a color and that is to use the fill tool. Now the advantage to setting up the color um, before you open up the page is I can draw on this color and then I can erase, but it will not erase the background color. There's a second way you can set up the color and that's using the fill tool, which is right here. And so I can go ahead and let me just use this purple color. And I'm gonna just, I can either do like a tap tap. Usually I find that the pencil doesn't work real, real well for filling. I usually use my finger to tap. And you can see that now it has filled in the color, the background with that color. However, if I use the eraser tool, it's gonna erase that color, okay? So you need to think through um, the way that you put in your background. Now, my colors are gonna be hidden right there. And so I need to go right there. And now let's say I wanna fill it in with white. I can fill it in with white and we are set to go, okay? So I think I'm just going to leave it white for right now. Let me just show you a couple other things with the fill. Oh, I better, I'm gonna change that back to a color now that we can see. You can see that you also have polka dots, some lines, and a couple that are textures. And then these have a slight bit of transparency on them as well. So the texture like that, if you want more of like a watercolor look in your background, can look really, really cool to use something like that if you want. You can also use the fill to fill a shape. And so let's say I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a shape like that. I can go into the fill. I need to make sure the shape is connected, that there's not a hole that the color can leak out of. And now I can tap into this shape and it's just going to fill in that shape for me. So that's pretty cool with the fill. I'm gonna show you one more trick with that in just a few minutes. Let me undo those two things. I'm going to go back to the ABC and also show you that there are some shapes that are available, circle, square, star. These are really helpful as you are making different things in your pictures. And so I'm just going to drag and drop this square. Now down here, I've got some different things that I can do with it. Um, if I don't want it, I would hit the X. If it is perfect, I hit the little check. But before I do that, I can take my finger and move it to wherever I want. I can also pinch it to make it bigger or smaller, to twist it, and so on. And then when I get it in the perfect spot that I want, I hit the check. And you'll notice that I use my finger rather than the pencil, Apple Pencil, to move it just works better. And particularly for the pinching, you're gonna to have to definitely use two fingers, wider to make it bigger, um, closer together to make it smaller. Okay, and then I'm gonna tap there and that's going to be set in place. I can also, once I have a shape, I can put a fill over top of it. So let's say, I'm gonna pick a different color here. Let's say I wanna put some yellow polka dots on here. If I go to the yellow polka dots, or the polka dots, change yellow to a different color, and then tap, tap on it. It is gonna just fill that shape 
with the texture that I put over it. So you can layer up textures over top of each other, which is kind of cool as well. Okay, I'm gonna undo that a minute. Let me get a little darker color here. Also, you will notice here that we have four fonts that are available um, on Taya Sui Sketches School. And so I'm just gonna pick one, I'm gonna pick Turncoat. And at this point, I want the keyboard. If I use my Apple Pencil like this, it is for scribble that would do text to um, typing. Usually, I think for most people, it is easier on this app to type. So I'm gonna double tap on that text. Let me double tap and see if I can get the whole thing. Triple tap, there, triple tap. will make sure that whole thing is highlighted, selected. And now I can go ahead and type something. All right, there we go. So I've just gone ahead and typed something. I can hide my keyboard by going down here. And then, same as with the shapes, I can pinch, twist with two fingers. With one finger, I can move it to get it into the perfect spot. If I need to go back in and change the typing, I tap on this little eye, which will get me back to my keyboard, and I can change that around. And then when everything is typed and in place the way I like it, I can hit the text box or the little check mark. Once it is here, it is painted in the background. I cannot go back and edit that text box. I would have to undo it or erase it if I decided I wanted to change it. So those are the ABC tools we've talked about, the shapes and also the text. Um, we've talked a little bit about the fill. Um, Last video, I talked about the eraser. We've got small, medium, and large. A lot of times, undo is a better way of getting rid of stuff you don't want. Oops. Like right here, you can see as I'm erasing, it is erasing both my um, background that I filled over top as well as my text. So obviously, that's a case where I can't use the eraser. I need to use undo. The next tool is a blending tool. This one works sometimes, and sometimes it does not work particularly well. So let's give it a test here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of draw a circle, and I'm gonna fill it in, okay? And you can see here, we've got some edges here that are showing up a little bit. I'm gonna go in and pick like a light, just a slightly lighter color. And oh, let me get it a little bit smaller brush. So I just wanna be able to maybe blend two colors together. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this. Go to the blending tool. And can you see how it's blending now as I'm going over? It's kind of mixing those two colors together. Now the problem you can see, it does sometimes go over the edge. And if so, if I want to have like a hard edge along there, when I'm done blending, I'd have to erase, but obviously I can't do that because I have a background colored over top of a colored background. Now I do find this blending tool is glitchy. Like right now I'm into it and it's not particularly working and I do not know what the secret is, why sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't think it's a tool you would use very often, but I would just say if you are thinking about using that tool, um, you would just want to be, um, you might have to play around with it a little bit. All right, for the next one with the knife, I'm going to go ahead and um, pull up a new sheet of paper that is white, okay? So I just want that white background. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a minute, just because we're gonna be doing some cutting of some objects. So I'm gonna go ahead again and just let me go ahead and draw. Um, let's see, let me just go ahead and draw like a little, no, I don't know. I'm just gonna make a little flower here. How about that? Okay, a little blue flower. I'm gonna put a little yellow center in it. Give it some texture. Okay, so I've got that flower. But now let's say I want to move it someplace else. 
I'm going to use this knife here. This is one of the most helpful tools there is for digital drawing. And I'm going to just kind of draw a little circle around that flower. Okay? And you will see it has copied that flower for me. But what I also has done, it has selected it. Now I can take my finger. And as long as that little dotted line, sometimes people call it the dancing ants, is around it, I can move it to wherever I want. I can also pinch it bigger and pinch it smaller. So sometimes you maybe want something with a lot of detail, but then you want it smaller in your picture, okay? Now this works best over a white background or a background that has been colored before you open up the page. All right, I'm gonna kind of leave it a medium size right there, okay? Now there's a couple other tricks that you can do once you have copied this. If you take two fingers, it's going to make a duplicate of it for you. And then I can move it around. So if I keep doing that, I can kind of make kind of a cool pattern, oops, using all of these in different sizes and kind of move them, twist them around. I can also do that when it is, when I have it circled, it has copied that image. If I go to these three dots and go to the square here with the arrow pointing down, it's going to allow me to paste, and there's going to be another duplicate of that first one that I did that I can move around and check. So you can do the duplicating two ways, like this, two fingers, or here, square, paste, and then move and check it off. All right, so that is hugely helpful but you always have to think about the background because sometimes it will cut and paste the background as well. All right, I'm gonna close this off. We're gonna look at one more tool here that has a lot of stuff in it, and that is the ruler, okay? I'm gonna start from the bottom and work up. Help is gonna give you some more information about this. So the ruler tool is going to allow you to draw straight lines to connect things. I'm gonna go back to the blue color. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure you pick a tool here that you can use for drawing. And you can see it kind of disappears. And then I can let go and it comes back. I can be very precise with the angles. So sometimes you want to be like exactly 90 degrees from that. So get exactly the amount of degrees you want. Let me twist it a little more 90. And then I can go down. Okay, so that's kind of fun. It allows you to be able to select um, where you put things, be a little bit precise, kind of fun for, you know, drawing abstract designs. There's another way you can do straight lines, and that is the line tool. Let me pick that. And so for the line tool, let me just change that to a different color so you can just kind of see the difference. For that one, you just basically draw your line and you can move it manually to where you want. And when you let go, it will stay in that spot. So this one also is kind of nice if you're just trying to connect things pretty precisely. You can move it till you get it exactly the way you want. So both of those tools are hugely helpful for you to be able to draw straight lines. All right, I'm gonna undo all of this. The last tool I want us to look at in here has a lot of different ways you can use it, and that's the symmetry. So I'm gonna open that up. We have one line, two lines, three lines, four lines of symmetry. So I'm just gonna go up here to this um, plain marker, and I'm just going to use the red for it. So if I have a single line of symmetry, there's a lot of things you can draw quite easily. You know, like a heart can be very easy to draw. Let me undo that in a minute. Um, it is great to draw um, things, you know, like an insect. So I could do like a, a butterfly very easily, or a dragonfly, or even let me go ahead and change this to a black color 
You could even draw kind of like cartoony characters by having, here, let me get back to here. So I could do like a circle face and then a body kind of sketching it along. But you can see how you could, you know, draw pretty symmetrical cartoon um, characters. And then once you draw them, if you turn the symmetry off, then, oops, that's, do you see how that cut that? It didn't go all the way around. If I go all the way around, you know, then I can pinch them and move them without the symmetry, okay? Let me undo this one. So when you get to the symmetry, let me go back to the symmetry and get a drawing line. You can also do the four lines of symmetry, which works really nice for things. Let me use the calligraphy brush. Maybe you want to do something that's kind of like a flower design. You know, you can do some cool things with the petals, you know, adding, you know, some leaves. And then once you have that done, you can also turn off the symmetry and fill that in. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of there. And then you have the same kind of thing with the symmetry. Um, as you go, you can get, you know, more lines of symmetry. The six line one is great to do snowflakes. So if I'm gonna go ahead and try, oops, Oh, and you can even move where that line of symmetry is. Oh, I didn't even realize you could do that. But here you can see how I can put this together into a snowflake using the symmetry. And you can kind of design your own snowflake that has the symmetry in it. And do that a minute. And the last little trick I'm going to go in for the one with the um, four lines of symmetry. Oh, I see. I've got to get myself pinched back. Now I'm back into the center. That's what I did wrong. All right. So you can see that looked a little bit off with the symmetry, but that's because I wasn't pinched into the center of the picture. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and with my thickest dot, this is what I call like the stained glass window look. Because you can really make kind of intricate designs using this. And once you have your design done, let me kind of put this together. You can see how it kind of looks like a stained glass window. Then I can go back to my roller. And I like using oops, that one right there that has a little bit of texture. I can pick my colors and I can start to fill. Okay. And I'm just going to turn my symmetry off and I can go ahead and find the spots that I want to fill in with different colors. And I can kind of get a really cool stained glass window look by doing um, that kind of effect. So those are some of the additional tools. Uh, the ruler, for lines and symmetry, the knife for moving, the blender, the eraser, your fill patterns here, and then your shapes and your um, text. And so there is a lot of cool things that you can do with those items. I hope this helps you to take advantage of all of the cool features that are in the free Teosu's School.